What's up guys, this is Andre or Tokenator if you know me from my stream and today I'm going to talk to you about foreshortening in animation. And there are a lot of videos out there about foreshortening already so I'm not really going to teach you how to do that. Um, but the basic concept, you know, is um, like taking a 3D object, like I've drawn for you here a cylinder, a box, and a sphere, but of course a sphere foreshortened is just a circle. And these are kind of the main um, shapes that you're using when constructing bodies that you want to animate. Uh, the human body can pretty much be reduced into spheres and cylinders. Even a he human head here can be, um, excuse me, uh, into boxes and cylinders. And I drew a head here, and the human head can even be reduced to a box. So if I were to draw a person's face, um, you can you can kind of construct or find a side plane and a front plane, and you can kind of make a box out of it. So if you're going to animate quickly, um, a person you know running around. Of course, um, it depends on how good your knowledge of anatomy is, um, if you can build anatomy off of the boxes and cylinders. But the better your knowledge of anatomy is, the better your animation is going to look. Um, but you can still reduce it when you're uh, pretty much sketching out an animation into uh, these shapes. So uh, here's the head, uh, ribcage is also a box, right? And then the pelvis is also a box. And this is, they're kind of like, uh, you can make them go at different angles here. And then the hands, or I mean the arms, they, they connect uh, with the ball and socket joint, which is kind of like a sphere. And then you can kind of create cylinders off of these. Uh, you can make even make these boxes if you want. It really depends on how you want to draw it or um, what works best for you. Or if you're already used to uh, drawing the curves of the muscles, then you can totally do that too, which is what I did right there. Um, anyway, uh, what I want to demonstrate is uh, actually animating it. So I'm just going to delete all these uh, red marks that I just made. Oops, I didn't want to delete that one. Wait, let's not delete that one. Okay, so what I'm going to do is uh, I've, I've prepared for you this sort of uh, shape right here with a cylinder and a sphere. And that for me, that's going to be an arm and a shoulder. So if I move forward, you can sort of see the uh, onion skin already. Oh, that's kind of bothering, uh, bothering me. I'm going to take that sphere out. Oops. Oops. Okay. There we go. Okay, so this is going to be my shoulder, this little sphere here. So it's not really going to move. But if I were to move the cylinder around the sphere with a little bit of convergence to show that this is moving in perspective and we're looking toward this person's arm here, um, this front circle or ellipse is going to be pretty much the same size as it is in the first frame. Uh, I won't be the most consistent here, but hopefully you get the general idea. And I'm just going to kind of move it around in space and maybe even bring it close, uh, bring it even more foreshortened here. Even, yeah, like bring it toward us, like facing toward the camera even. And the camera is just our eyes. Right there, you see that? It's just coming toward us. So you can kind of see this uh, moving around a little bit already. I'm going to change the FPS to 12 here. I really like 12 FPS. I can, I'm pretty used to the timing. So you can see there's already a little loop there, and this, kind of, this guy is sort of flailing his arm. Um, if you can imagine that there is a person over here. I'm just going to draw a ribcage in the frame beneath. And maybe this person has another arm over here. And let me play that back again. You can see a guy flailing his arm. So that's pretty much a general idea of, of animating foreshortening. But what I'm going to do is actually try to um, draw it with more realistic shapes. Now the thing about drawing human muscles, um, and what's important to remember when you're animating them, is that muscles muscles actually change shape um, when they're contracting and when they're uh, extending. I don't know the uh, proper um, terms for that, but uh, the one I want to look at is the deltoid, right? So if I have an arm and it's just relaxing, the deltoid is pretty much going to be mostly relaxed here and it's going to be pretty long. And the bicep here, everything's relaxed. But when the arm does uh, lift upward, the deltoid kind of compresses like this way. 
So, so there's going to be, it's going to kind of protrude more upward that way. So what I want to do when animating this is I'm going to, I'm going to have, I'm going to pretty much do the same thing here. I'm going to draw a person's rib cage with more, a little bit more realistic shape this time. And maybe a pelvis here, which I'm going to keep to a box because it's much easier to just draw a box for the pelvis. And a little bit of a shape here, maybe some pectorals here. That's my setup. Maybe even a head. Let's do a draw a head. There. There's my head. Uh, let's lift it up a little bit. Okay. So in the layer above, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to draw a person's arm starting with the deltoid and just have it kind of relaxed, maybe even a little bit lower here. And I'm just going to have him do the same thing as what the cylinder is doing is basically flailing around. I'm not going to worry about hands. I'm just going to draw his arm. So let's once it starts to lift, you can see if the deltoid is going to start pulling and compressing a little bit. And as it comes up, the it's going to start compressing this way, what you see of the arm. There's the bicep right there, the elbow over here. And you just kind of have to imagine things moving toward you in space. And I do want to have a little bit of perspective in here too, kind of like how this cylinder looks where the this ellipse near us is getting bigger. So I'm going to try to make it so that as he lifts his arm toward us that it's kind of getting bigger. Bigger as in it's getting closer to our eyes. So up here we have the deltoid. Forearm. And of course, like I said, your knowledge of anatomy, it really depends on how good it is to make this animation look pretty. My anatomy is not the strongest. But it's, it's enough to get the general shapes of things sometimes, and that's something I can always improve. And it's something you can always improve. And if your anatomy is not really so great, you can stick to cylinders and um, boxes and keep it simple if you want to still practice animation and not worry so much about anatomy. And this deltoid's coming up. It's kind of exaggerated a little bit here, but this is a little bit that can go to the side. So let's let's play this back. Let's see what's happening so far. Yeah, his arm's just sort of lifting there. Did I miss a frame? I think I did. I'm going to move this frame back. Okay. Okay, so let's con let's keep moving around. Let's move it upwards this way. We want let's try to help help this guy make a full rotation of his arm. Or revolution, I should say. So now he's reaching up and then the deltoid starts to pull up this way. And when you lift your arm like this, my delta is not so big, but it'll start getting closer to my face over here. Let's keep going. Let's push this arm forward. The delta you can start to see the deltoid back here on the back side of it. And um, even on this particular thing, you can probably animate the scapula, which is the shoulder blade, a little bit too, but. I'm not going to worry about that right now. And then the forms will start to elongate again. Not fully yet right now, but as his arm, let's say he's pushing his arm straight forward. His deltoid will stretch that way. And then this hand, this hand is moving away from us away from the camera and so it'll get smaller again let's see let's actually draw this hand it's probably pretty big let's say this uh, these fingers are totally coming toward us here and they look very big hopefully you can see that happening pretty well this is a little bit exaggerated too maybe I can make this arm a little shorter here maybe it's not that long okay and here we have his arm all the way down there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this frame forward so that I can make it loop nicely. So you can't see it. Oh, yeah, you can actually see it in the onion skin here. Well, I'm, I want to move 
you can see it in the green. I'm going to move this arm all the way down so that we get a loop. And I'm going to keep going that way. Hmm. Yeah, actually, that looks fine. Let, let's, uh, yeah. So this arm is extended. So it, 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 it only for really foreshortens on the way up. And that was sort of a not really conscious decision, but just kind of what's happening as I draw. And a lot of times um, when you're animating, you it's you can plan out you know keyframes, which is what I did here. But sometimes uh, with the in betweens, you don't really know what's going to happen, and it's kind of fun to discover because you're just moving it as if, as if it's a puppet. And what I like about animation is sometimes it kind of draws itself because the rest of the image is already there, and you're just kind of moving it around. There we go. That's that's good enough, I think. Let's take a look at this. Let's watch this guy kind of flame his arm around. That's pretty cool. And of course, the rest of his body is super rigid, but hopefully that gives you idea of, an idea of how to foreshorten uh, in animation. Um, and just remember that the muscle shapes are changing as you go. Uh, what? I'm missing a frame here. I don't know what happened in this frame. Let's redraw it. Since we have the, uh, the onion skins here, the green and the red, uh, I'm I don't know what happened to this frame, but I'm just gonna sort of draw a tween here Or an in-between and let's move it the arm like right about here and then this arm is also Coming toward us. So this hand will be big and I can even go back and draw all the hands if I wanted to But I won't do that for now for the sake of the exercise And now let's take out the onion skins. You can see it now happening pretty smoothly Somewhat smoothly. How's that? All right, that's pretty much it. I just wanted to show you guys um, uh, how to do that. And I do want to do a sort of a follow-up video. I've set up this animation in Toon Boom of a guy doing a backflip. Um, and I think a backflip is a really great exercise to practice the same concept. Um, let's stop this at frame 7 here so you can see what I've started so far. Let's loop it. Um, so I do want to finish this animation in a follow-up video. Um, but for a backflip, you would have to foreshorten all the pieces, like the arms, the legs, the head, the ribcage, and the pelvis, which are all the major parts that you want to focus on in animation. So uh, I hope that video was helpful to you guys. I did this all in one take. I'm probably going to edit it a little bit later. Uh, let me know what you guys think or if you have any other ideas for um, videos that you want to see. Uh, peace out. I love you all. Bye-bye.